Tottenham uh, did a job on Newcastle, Danny, 5-1, uh, temporarily move into the top four. Let's just say, Danny, you're one of your former clubs, if Tottenham secure fourth place and they've got a world-class manager in Conte and they've got a phenomenal stadium, maybe the best in Europe, and they've got Champions League football, do Tottenham suddenly become, for any prospective player, um, a bigger draw and a more attractive proposition than the likes of Arsenal and even Manchester United? All these things considered, I mean. You're always a more attractive proposition if you're in the Champions League because players want to play in the Champions League. But if you're comparing to Manchester United, um, then you're looking at the finances becoming more important than the Champions League status. So if you're talking, OK, geogra- uh, ge- yeah. the geographical situation is relevant for a lot of players. I know I played with players who didn't want to play anywhere but London, which I found bizarre, but that was I understand why, especially coming from further afield. But if you're asking me, does that overtake? Does do Tottenham overtake Manchester United in terms of appeal to a player, player A, if you like? The answer is no, because you would still be looking at Manchester United and thinking over a period of the next four years, they will be more likely to be regularly in the Champions League and competing than Tottenham. Yeah, but what about mm. the chance to play for Conte? Everybody wants to play for Conte. Well, that's a personal thing, because if you know him and you've worked with him, yes would be the answer, but no looking from afar. What, you want to play for a highly emotional, workaholic manager who has you training like a demon and doesn't take any back chat? Or I'm not sure it's the most appealing manager in the world if you don't know him. Mm. I wouldn't be... I, if I was playing now, I wouldn't be thinking I'd love to go and play with Conte and be under that... Um, and call him a tyrant I mean, in a, in a nice way but that's not the type of manager I'd want to go and play for So what have we got in Tottenham Simon if they finish fourth what did Tottenham look like to you? My 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 how the framework of the conversation yes. changed about Conti it wasn't three or four weeks ago that he was out the door wasn't going to be staying the media were pouring well, all over a, pouring yeah, over every him. single sentence of what he said and didn't, didn't say his yeah. demeanour wasn't right the that dis- was down to him but the bottom line is that Conte was always going to go nowhere it wasn't going to be a situation that there was going to be a problem it wasn't about players not being signed it was all about a creation around certain aspects of uh, a media perception of what his relationship was going to be like with Daniel Levy what Tottenham looked like at this moment in time is a side that beat Newcastle on the so back of a good run, though. They've been they're on a, good a decent run. run of form. You know, we'll see how they get on against the Arsenals of the world when they come into those particular games to be able to make the difference. If they finish fourth, then Conte will have done a very good job. Um, and and, and it will be a very interesting question that will be asked in the summer. I've always maintained that there would be some spending in Tottenham, some, some, some significant spending to match the expectations of appointing a manager like Conte. I always thought it was slightly absurd, the argument that Conte went into Tottenham not knowing what he was going into and that he wouldn't be supported. Support someone at the right time, not just because other people like the media say, oh, you must buy people in January. You must buy people in January because that's where you get your best players nonsense you get your best players when you lay down the case for why you want them and buy them at a time of year that's appropriate to buy good players in so I think Tottenham at this moment in time are changing the narrative week on week we've gone from it was two weeks ago we're sat in here with Sam Matterface well we know what Tottenham are going to do win lose win lose win lose and it's just micromanaging everything they look decent yesterday they look decent because Newcastle weren't very good at times now you could make the arguments that Newcastle were made to not look very good. A player that's been so instrumental in some of their recovery recently was dreadful on Sunday. Dan Byrne was poor. He's mm. been very good uh, for Newcastle in recent weeks. So I reserve my judgment on Tottenham. You know, I'm, 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 I don't want to flip flop around. My my fourth spot was allocated to Manchester United, but I'm beginning mm. to unwind that particular opinion because well, Manchester United see... would always be the more attractive club to go to. Even over Tottenham in fourth. I don't know. You know, you know, if you want to win things, arguably in your minds are you'd go to Man United. But what do you win at Manchester United? You haven't won anything for half a decade. You haven't won the Premier League for no, a decade. I was talking more about the finances. They they will pay more than Tottenham. Well, yeah, so okay. you would sacrifice the champion. But it depends on the individual. You know, I played. Do you remember Moussa Dembele went to Tottenham when Liverpool and Manchester United were interested? Because he didn't want to leave London. And at that point, Tottenham weren't competing. But that's just the individual. It's a very it's a very personal thing. You make them. You make the observation about if you're a top player surely, and you, you speak to this obviously, it's not about the perception of a manager, whether he's a workaholic or someone that drives you to a position where you're at the very best you can be. If you're a top player, surely that's the environment you want to be in. Yeah. So Conti is someone that drives you to a level of attainment. He takes Victor Moses mm. from a bit player at Chelsea to a, a Champions League, or sorry, a Premier League winning wing-back. And so players will look at it surely and say, if I fancy going to Tottenham because it's in the mix... 
Surely the, the, the added benefit of Conti making me... If I'm a real winner and I want to be in a winning environment, then Conti would be an allure, mm. not uh, a, 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 you know, a deterrent. A, a deterrent no, yeah. but what you would do if, if you got half a brain would be you, you would take away your long-distance perceptions and you would go and meet the prospective managers and make a judgment then. Yeah. You might, listen, you might have some friends who play for the team who are saying to you, this guy's great, you know, even though your perception is wrong. But yeah. it, I'm just talking a more generic, quick perception as a player from afar. If you're a, if you're a wanted player and you go... I mean, I think it was Van Dijk who ended up meeting three or four different managers when he was when they were all courting him, and Klopp won 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 that signature because no, of he his, wanted to go to Liverpool because more of, than anybody. yes, but because of Klopp. Yeah, that that yeah. that was I know that for, for a fact. Yeah. Klopp's character is he sold it, and the, and there were certain aspects of the yeah. way Conte proposed the move to Chelsea where it was like whoa, not yeah. for me. I think he wanted to go to Liverpool. and I think Klopp put the wax seal on it. Yes, yeah, yeah. a bit of both. Yeah, fair so point. Let's see but, but you know finish, what I'm talking about. If they finish fourth, it gets very interesting, doesn't it? Inter- interestingly, that was a first. Danny Murphy just helped you finish the sentence here. Did you see that? <laughs> just one thing. Just that one, was a first. Just one thing on the perspective fight for top four. There's one similarity that West Ham and you can add West Ham into it now. Tottenham and Arsenal all have and have all had for the last few months is consistency in selection and tactical plan. You can see what all three of them are trying to do. Mm. Compare that to Manchester United, who are supposed to be competing. Sure. We don't know what they're doing yeah. from one week to the next. Still. Those three teams, you know how they're going to play. Yeah. You can see the relationships building. The selection's been generally the same, the first 11, give or take one or two players based on injuries or suspensions. Mm. There's a real consistency and stability in those three yeah. teams. Yeah, United, big box of tricks. We'll get to that. It's half ten. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.